So, uh, thanks, Krishna. Um, and I'll just say one more thing about the one-time passwords um, that in the cloud, we'll talk a little bit about one-time password um, uh, systems and why that's important there, um, because when you're putting your own credit card behind this or attaching it to a grant, um, you want security in place so that people aren't you know, using those resources, but also thinking about how we can improve the user experience around one-time passwords and making that easier to fit into your workflow is something we can also think about together. Um, so Krishna, thank you for the overview on, uh, on Savio. And uh, what I'd like to uh, talk to everyone about here is um, the new cloud consulting services that we're providing to researchers here on campus. And um, what I'm not gonna try to do is define what cloud computing is, because um, many of you probably have your own definitions of cloud computing, and I'd actually really love to hear um, what you have in mind for, uh, for cloud computing. What I'll do instead is explain what options may be available to you today, um, and, um, um, and then some of the work that we've been doing with researchers already, uh, providing some consultation to explore and, and do some experiments around what, what do researchers here on our campus need by way of cloud computing support. Um, so I'll start with what are the options. And if we can go back in time uh, about a decade ago, so 2005, um, this is the number of options that would be available to you for cloud computing. Um, there weren't cloud computing as, it, as we think of it today didn't really exist 10 years ago. Um, we would be talking about high performance computing systems or uh, grid computing. Um, in the commercial space, people were talking about utility computing. Um, but the cloud, cloud language hadn't really emerged uh, at that point in time. It wasn't really until 2006 when Amazon Web Services released a product called uh, Elastic Cloud Compute Service, EC2. So in, in, in 2006, that was really kind of the emergence of this term cloud computing in the way that we kind of think of it today. Um, so a question you might have is how long did it take from the emergence of cloud computing to this actually appearing within the research spaces on, on campuses across the country? Um, in my own personal experience, it was in May 2007 that a couple of grad students walked into my office at Harvard where we were working on grid computing at the time and said, hey, I heard about this cloud computing thing. Can you help me with that? Um, so this very brief history, um, if we fast forward to today, um, there's many more options available. In fact, many, many more options available in the commercial cloud computing space. Um, some of the icons you see here are some of the things uh, that we've heard across campus that researchers here um, have actually been using on our campus. There's many more represented by these cloud question marks of, you know, maybe you're using something that's not listed up here, and we'd like to hear what that is um, and work with you around that. Um, but there's also options available that are not in the commercial clouds, uh, and that's on national infrastructure. And for a moment, I'll give you a brief history around the national infrastructure from about 1974 to 2014. Um, these are, uh, you know, universities or uh, supercomputing centers around the country that provide some sort of uh, computing, high-speed networking, uh, and data services uh, to researchers uh, across the country and across the world. Um, these services are much more traditional high-performance computing or supercomputing-oriented super uh, environments. Um, they generally tend uh, to have a high degree of skill that you have to have to begin using these machines. Um, and um, what's been happen happening more recently in the last five years um, is a program called Exceed, the Extreme uh, Science and Engineering Discovery Environment. Um, so this is a collection, it's the most advanced, powerful, and robust collection of integrated digital services um, around the world. And these are high performance computing systems um, at different campuses um, that you can actually get access to through this Exceed program. Um, it's a five year, $121 million uh, project supported by NSF. Um, it started in 2011 and the project end was 2016, but they're pursuing some renewal for this for another five years um, because this program has been a, a wild success. 
It's uh, approximately 200 campuses have what are called campus champions, exceed campus champions. I'm one of those for the, the Berkeley campus. Um, and we can provide consulting to help get access to these national, uh, national resources. Um, so emerging national infrastructure around Exceed includes a whole bunch of new systems that are much more cloud-like. So that's part of why we include Exceed in uh, this conversation around cloud, is that these new systems are thinking about um, more uh, flexibility around the way um, your workflows work, uh, somebody had a question about how you uh, might have an API to uh, submit into um, the Savio cluster. Um, in Exceed, there are some things called community gateways that are looking at what are your domain-specific needs around being able to submit jobs um, and providing a platform to do that. Um, so some of these different systems are tuned for data. So if you have more data-intensive workloads, if you're using Spark and Hadoop as your analytic stacks, um, then some of these systems um, might be more suitable to you. Others of these systems look like more traditional cloud computing environments, like you know, the commercial provider, providers that are out there. Um, so there's a lot of different options. What are the challenges? So options are actually the first set of challenges because there's so many options. The commercial cloud providers, the national infrastructure, new architectures emerging. In fact, maybe too many options. Um, so how to choose between them? Well, so our BRC consulting services can help you match your computational requirements with the appropriate resources. Um, so what we can do if you contact us is we can schedule a time and, and kind of understand what are your computation, computational needs, what are your, um, you know, your data workflows, and we can go back through that list of options and, and help you find the right set of resources for you. The next challenge is around complexity. And so the researchers on our campus really are no strangers to complexity. Um, there's a bunch of really amazing research that's going on. And some of the groups that we're working with, uh, for example, are working on complex projects like this, transportation engineering for a highway system across the entirety of the state of California. That's a pretty complex problem. So folks here are no strangers to complexity. Um, and in fact, some of these folks have built some really uh, great software infrastructure underneath you know, the research that's going on. Um, so this is a, a diagram that one of the groups shared with us about their uh, software engineering architecture um, underneath the research. And uh, they wanted to move some of this into the cloud. Part of it is built out in our data center here on campus. Um, and they contacted us and said, hey, we'd like to use a particular you know, commercial cloud provider. Um, can you help us with that? Because we have this complex system. And when we fire up the console on this commercial cloud provider, this is what we see. So we have layers and layers of complexity. And it's like, where do you even begin in this? Um, and so part of our consulting can help you, you know, document best practices and automate some of the provisioning and, and help you think about um, how you might integrate cloud computing um, with the work that you're already doing. So in this case, because some of the resources in our campus data center and we have a relationship with the vendor that the university has negotiated, we actually have a direct connection from our network into the vendor's uh, cloud computing network. Um, and thereby we can actually reduce the cost of um, data transferring out of those commercial networks because they charge you for, for data leaving. Um, and we can help, you know, address some of the complexities and, and, you know, help you with best practices around those sorts of things. Um, so that's a preview of the next challenge, which is really around cost. Um, over the long arc of your research, over the full research lifespan of a particular project that you're working on, uh, the needs that you have are going to change over time. Sometimes you need more computing resources, sometimes you need less, depending on the kind of stage you are in your research, who you're collaborating with, and so on. Um, oftentimes, the commercial cloud providers will provide you, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of dollars of, of free credits on their system to get started. Um, so these vendor subsidies, depending on your work case and your, your workload, um, the question you might ask is, is that going to last you for the entirety of your research project's life cycle? And I see a few folks here today who I know who are coming up against this challenge right now. 
Um, and when you make a request for more, you sometimes get no as an answer. So what do you do next? So part of our consulting can help you plan for and manage the costs of your research projects using these kinds of resources. And lastly, let's say you've figured out how much it's going to cost you, what you're going to use, you've got the right set of resources you know, to deal with the complexity, and now you want to get access to the system and start using it. Well, here's a question that comes up in many different forms uh, uh, right away with us. A new faculty member joined earlier this summer and asked uh, this in email. So, do you know how most faculty handle cloud computing payments? Um, it turns out that when this faculty member talked to their, uh, their purchasing person, they said, well, we can't use credit cards. You can't uh, use a credit card. Um, you have to use the university system, bear buy, um, so you can use a chart string. Cloud vendors, they have no idea about our bear buy system. They don't necessarily understand how to do invoicing in the way that we need it. And so the university has worked with some of these vendors to try to figure out that process. And so we can actually help to facilitate access to these resources. Um, if you're not using the commercial cloud providers, we can also help facilitate access to the resources you know, to exceed. If you, if you need uh, an allocation on one of those resources, you know, we can also we can help with that. And though we're talking about research computing, um, we know that a lot of you are doing teaching and training um, in these same kinds of environments where you have a research environment that you might want to you know, provide in the teaching environment that you're using. Um, and in fact, you might want to do that in the cloud, especially if the resources you have available on your local cluster or um, you know, other areas won't actually fit the load of, of you know, hundreds of students doing data intensive or compute intensive kinds of applications. Um, there are often uh, commercial vendors that provide subsidies for uh, teaching purposes, um, as well as Exceed provides uh, teaching environments that you can request allocations for uh, to uh, run your classes in some version of the cloud. And so to recap, basically our cloud computing, uh, you know, we, we provide consulting to help you match your computation requirements with those appropriate resources, plan for and manage costs, facilitate access to those resources, and document the best practices and automate provisioning. And it's all free. So um, at no cost to you, you can contact us and have, uh, you know, schedule a consult consultation. We can go through, you know, start wherever you are, um, figure out what you need and, and work with you and, and really partner with you on, uh, on the solutions you need to, to build for your research. Um, cloud computing and this consulting is not alone, though. It, it's actually part of this, you know, larger coordinated set of services that is Berkeley Research Computing. So, Krishna earlier talked to you about the condo and institutional cluster. Um, we have cloud computing and virtual workstations, with, which uh, Patrick Schmitz uh, described to us a little bit about earlier. And over the course of your research, you might actually want to move between uh, various types of resources. And in fact, you might want to, you know, one day start with your laptop. Um, move on to one of these resources, move out into a commercial cloud or exceed or into one of the other national centers. Um, and part of our consulting can help you with moving between those resources, helping to reduce the friction of starting on one system and moving to another. Because when you build, build for one particular cluster environment and if you've ever tried to move your code to another environment, um, the experience, you know, really varies depending on, you know, where that endpoint is. So we can help you plan around some of that. And really, consulting is right at the heart of, of everything that we're doing to really support this. Um, but importantly, community, all of you here and our partners, um, are a really import, important part of making this actually work. Um, one of the partners that we're working with this fall is the D-Lab. So the D-Lab is the Data Intensive Social Sciences, and they provide uh, training and support and consulting around uh, a whole host of things. Uh, they reached out to us because they've been using various commercial cloud providers and, and um, you know, the institutional cluster and said, we'd actually like to work with our community and open this up to the, the wider campus community to invite people in and talk about um, how we you know, use the cloud. Um, 
this is one of the areas where we can work together to document some of the best practices and wrestle with some of these challenges, and you don't have to do it alone. Um, so it's co-hosted by DLab and uh, Berkeley Research Computing. The members are from all over campus, from all walks of life, from faculty all the way through, you know, research staff and volunteers. Um, and this represents, you know, a big long list of the people that we already have either on our mailing list or coming to our uh, sessions, which are every Thursday from, or sorry, every other Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. So next week will be our next session. You can sign up for the weekly newsletter um, or join us in the DLab collaborative space. And lastly, how can you get started? Just email us at ResearchIT. Um, and with that, you can take questions. How does data fit into this? How, how does data fit into this? I mean, I've seen a lot about compute, and great, we've got this nearly petabyte scratch storage, but I've got a, a researcher who, you know, bought his own 32 terabyte storage and filled it up in a couple of months and now he's buying another 64 terabyte one and he's trying to figure out how do I back this up because, you know, I, <laughs> this is important data. And so is there a plan for data, I hope? So not only is there a plan, there's a program called Research Data Mo Management. And uh, as soon as we wrap up with the questions, we'll actually move into that, um, which really addresses the bigger questions around managing your data, both the, the long term and the short term. And it's very closely integrated with Berkeley Research Computing, so we can think about what are your active data management needs, things like the storage or scratch space. Um, and, and so Chris Hoffman, who's here, will be talking about that in just a couple of minutes. Um, that said, part of the, the cloud computing working group um, does address some of the data um, questions that arise because you really can't decouple the compute and the data. They, they got to go together. Um, so several of the folks who are in the research data management program here are also members of this cloud computing working group. And so when we meet every other week, um, as some of these questions arise, we can break into smaller groups and talk about that. But also, you can schedule time with uh, our consultants um, and whether you have data questions or compute questions, we'll be working very closely together with them um, so that you don't have to explain your whole story every time you talk to a new consultant about a new topic. We can actually, you know, work together with you on that. Any other, uh, oh, did you want to say a couple other things? Yeah, I just want to jump in on that. Um, obviously, this is one of the more common questions that's coming up a lot as people are dealing with this. And I will say um, our group is participating along with the research IT equivalents at most of the UCs in the system. And there is, is an effort underway now to draw those groups together and do a better job of sharing solutions and identifying the problem points and looking where we may need uh, common solutions that are bigger than a campus. Um, the number one question that came up in the early focus groups we had with faculty was, what do I do about my data? and How do I manage it? So on the one hand, we have this great effort on campus here with a library and research IT are partnering to address this, but we are also looking at a larger level. Um, there are um, data grants that are available through some of the national infrastructure as well as compute grants. So there's a variety of things that are, um, can address individual pieces of it, uh, but broadly it is a big open question. There isn't a simple answer to it at this point, but we're looking very closely at it and a lot of people are engaged in this. It's a common question, so we're, we're definitely um, figuring it out and looking at ways that we can provide different kinds of solutions that range from active data management to archival and preservation stories. So. And the one other thing I'll add to that, so Patrick mentioned the uh, national infrastructure. Through Exceed, we can get access to these data grants um, and access to the new systems that are coming online. So one of the earlier slides it was talking about new emerging systems in the national infrastructure space from 2015 to 2016 coming online next year. They're actually optimized for data intensive computations. Um, so if you contact us, you can get early access to those systems and we can work with you on, you know, if that's the right kind of environment for you to be working in, we can explore what that looks like. Um, and they have, you know, tools like uh, Spark and Hadoop already built in, so not only can you move your data there via high-speed, um, you know, science DMZ style networks, um, but you can also operate on that data using Spark and Hadoop and so on. Other questions?
All right, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Chris Hoffman. Thank you, everybody.